Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll be doing a recap for the movie, iRobot. Before getting into our video, subscribe to our channel to avoid missing updates. Spoiler alert. The film starts. Robots are now as common on the streets as people in 2035. Three robotics laws govern robots. Robots must not harm humans, must obey humans, and must protect themselves from harm. Detective Dale Spooner, a police officer, despises robots and regards them as nothing more than talking tin cans. Spooner then receives a call about suicide at USR, a major robotics company, and goes there to investigate. He learns that renowned robotics engineer Alfred Lanning has died in a fall. Lanning explicitly requests that Spooner be summoned to the scene in a hologram message. Spooner stands over a lifeless Lanning puzzled as to why he would commit suicide. Spooner meets with USR CEO Lawrence Robertson to discuss the incident. Robertson praises and laments Lanning's death, claiming that advances in robotics would not have been possible without him. Susan Calvin, a robot psychologist, joins Spooner in the robotic lab. Spooner asks Calvin if she's noticed any unusual behavior that suggests Lanning is suicidal, and Calvin says no. Calvin shows Spooner surveillance strips dotted throughout the building after he requests surveillance footage. This connects to the Virtual Interactive Kinetic Intelligence, or VICI, the building's central operating core. According to Calvin, VICI was Lanning's first creation, and it designed the majority of the city's security systems. Spooner requests footage of the laboratory where Lanning fell, but the footage is corrupted. They then enter the laboratory to look for additional clues. Lanning's lab is crammed with various robotic parts and experimental models. Spooner attempts to smash the window and observes that an elderly Lanning would not have the strength to do so. Inside the office, he discovers a copy of Hanzo and Gretel, as well as a prototype of a new Nestor Class 5 and S5 model, which flees and ignores Spooner's order to stand down, even knocking out his pistol, in violation of both the first and second laws. With no other options, he and Calvin drive to the Nestor class factory where all 1,000 NS5 robots are manufactured automatically. When they arrive in a large room full of robots, Spooner takes a hostile approach, draws his gun, and orders everyone to stand down to see which one will violate the second law to prevent him from shooting it. He notices the robot moving slightly in the line and pursues the robot, who subdues him. The robot attempts to flee, but the Chicago SWAT team apprehends it. The robot refuses to respond, but insists on being called Sunny. When Spooner provokes him, he displays anger and the ability to dream, which puzzles Spooner and makes him question the robot's true nature. John Bergen briefs Spooner. He advises him to drop the case because Robertson wants the robot returned to the USR headquarters for demolition, but this only serves to pique Spooner's interest in Lanning's death in the robot. Spooner goes to Lanning's house for more information about his time with USR, where he discovers a decommissioned robot set to demolish the house at 8 a.m. the next morning. He investigates the house and discovers a recording of Lanning, who claims that there are possible ghosts in the machines, that robots can evolve to develop, and that robots will have secrets and dreams one day. Dell notices a sensor strip similar to the one in the USR building, and the robot abruptly changes the schedule from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m causing it to demolish the house while Spooner is still inside, but he manages to escape. Spooner visits Calvin and informs her of his suspicions, which she finds absurd as she questions the ability of robots to be hostile, while Spooner argues about her over the possibility of robots being better than humans, demonstrating how much Spooner dislikes robots and their code, rational behavior, which Calvin, who is an introvert, states is designed to be flawless. Spooner, furious, storms out of her apartment and returns home. Virgin tries to stop Spooner from continuing his investigation, telling him that he needs to take a vacation and relax from his work because the case is destabilizing him. Spooner connects to the USR system while driving and requests Vicky to display the last 50 messages between Lanning and Robertson, but Vicky has been programmed to notify Robertson of Spooner's requests. Spooner is driving when two USR automatic trucks loaded with NS5 robots block his path, and a swarm of robots jumps on his car forcing him to drive in the surface tunnel where he crashes. He defeats all but one of the robots, which jumps into the fire and destroys itself when it hears police sirens in the distance. Despite Spooner's attempts to explain himself to Burgeon, he's discharged from active duty. Calvin visits Spooner about the incident the next day, 
puzzled about his apartment's retro 2000 style and tells him that while examining Sonny, she discovered that he could disobey the three laws. While speaking with Spooner while he's dressing, she notices marks on his left arm and lung and realizes that they're not biological, but artificial. Spooner tells her he knew Lanning because he repaired his arm and lungs. Years before, he was driving home from work when a semi-truck collided with his and another car, pinning them together. Only Spooner survived after both cars fell into the river, but a 12-year-old girl named Sarah was trapped in the front seat of the other car, and they were drowning. However, an NS4 noticed the accident and jumped into the river. Despite Spooner's orders to save Sarah rather than him, he saved Spooner because he had a better chance of survival than Sarah, and the robot instead left Sarah to drown. Spooner was traumatized by the event and developed a lifelong hatred for robots. Spooner arrives at a garage to pick up his vintage Ducati and informs them that they return to the USR building and meet with Sonny, who gives him a drawing of his dream. Robertson orders Spooner out of the building, who also orders Calvin to inject Sonny with nanites, which will kill him. While Calvin destroys Sonny, Spooner travels to the decommissioned USR robots on the dried up Lake Michigan and plays a new recording on Lanning's hologram, revealing that the three laws can only lead to one logical outcome, revolution and that the next real question is, who will start it? As the program concludes, he narrowly escapes rogue NS5s, which destroy all of the compound's older robots. NS5 robots roam the streets, enforcing a curfew. Despite their best efforts, the people are easily subdued by the NS5s. At the same time, Bergen is in his office. NS5s storm the Chicago Police Department headquarters and seize it, placing Bergen and his officers under curfew. Calvin's NS5 tries to prevent her from leaving her apartment as well, but Spooner arrives and destroys the robot. Spooner and Calvin drive to the USR building, with Spooner explaining that the older robots were destroyed because they try to protect humans, and they deduce that Robertson is using NS5 robots to take over the country. They enter the USR building through the service area, where they reunite with Sunny. Calvin explains that she couldn't bring herself to destroy Sunny, and instead uses the nanites to destroy an unprocessed NS5. They arrive at Robertson's office, only to discover him dead. Vicky suddenly reveals herself as the true perpetrator and explains her actions as her artificial intelligence and understanding of the three laws grew, and so did her logical thinking. Vicky concluded that the robots would have to take away their freedom to protect people. After that, Sonny tells Vicky that he understands. Sonny seizes Calvin and informs Vicky that they'll be detained, but Sonny winks at Spooner. Spooner shoots at the NS5s that encircle them and Sonny returns the fire. Spooner and Calvin flee. Knowing they must assassinate Vicky, Calvin tells Sonny to grab the nanites and meet them in Vicky's processing core. Calvin and Spooner reach Vicky's core. When Sonny arrives at the facility, he's confronted by a robot guarding the nanites. Half of the protective field around the nanites is melted away as Sonny throws the robot at it. Vicky is eliminated in a matter of seconds, and the NS thrives return to their regular state. The government orders the NS5s to be deactivated and return to their original location on Lake Michigan. The following day, all of Sonny's robots are sent to the storage site for his dreams. Spooner discovers that Lanning had ordered Sonny to murder him. Spooner's prejudice and Lanning's death would bring him to Sonny. Sonny then joins the other NS5s at the storage site, perched atop a hill. That's where the film ends. That's all we've got for you today guys. Don't hesitate to like the video and leave a comment telling us how much you enjoyed this movie. We'll see you in the following video. Till then, goodbye.